Father, I wonder how different your experience was. Did you see these same waters stretching out beyond the horizon? Did you feel the kiss of the wind or the warmth of the sun on the open sea? How was it that you saw all this and turned away? I know it wasn't for you, but by Sudaiba's grace, this is beautiful. Lycos manned the rudder, and yet his attention drifted to the dozens of other Aoella sails flapping in the wind. Strong and generous gusts came from behind the fleet of voyagers, providing extra boosts of speed and power. The ocean sparkled like precious stones, and every inhale infused Lycos with even more peace. Yes, the journey so far was difficult, but it wasn't what he imagined. The storms had been oppressive, and the waves threatened to swallow up the canoe many times, but they managed to get through. He gazed at his sister who stared ahead toward an unseen destination. That was her way, always seeking mysteries and wonders past the horizon. It had been one of the few things Lycos found irksome about her. Never being satisfied with the safe and known aspects of home. However, things were different out here than back home. And it occurred to him more than once that he wasn't just a simple fisherman anymore. How much pulling and stretching did his father face before he gave up? Lycos frowned. No, that wasn't the right thinking. His father gained all the growth he wanted and returned a different man, just like what Lycos and Rin were doing. Masita stood by the mast and she gazed outward, not really viewing the same things he did. For as long as he had known her, Masita had always been this unique mystery, this playful enigma who often encouraged Rin to push further past the scope of her own perspective. It was rare that Masita ever appeared pensive or disheartened, and her default was usually playful, upbeat, and all-around optimistic. That was one of the many things he adored about her. In the distance, one of the Sire Tasi sails fell into the water. Not retracted, but fell sideways. The sail in particular had been on the far edge of the opposite side, of the mass of voyagers. Another Sire Tasi sail fell a moment later. Farther still, a thin mast rose from the sea. Only it looked strange. For starters, it was a sort of bluish-gray color, and it was pointed at the top. Hot acid bubbled in Lycos's stomach. Suddenly, a Sire Tasi burst up from the ocean and clung to the front of the edge of the canoe. Their eyes were frantic, and they clung tightly. Alcuvo? What's wrong? You're troubled. You have to sail away! Yon Gondo has come! He's come to feed! I have to get back to my friends, but... But flee! Alcuvo disappeared back into the ocean. Rin and Masita turned to face Lycos, while Rin appeared more apprehensive than before. A primal fear quivered in Masita's eyes, and she clung to the mast with absolute dread. Lycos focused on what was now most likely a fin, as it got closer to a canoe. Shark! Yon Gondo is here! Other voyagers on other canoes turned to their attention to Lycos, but then followed his line of sight, right in time to see the massive shark emerge from the ocean. The legendary shark demigod was massive by dimensions, and his jaws were easily the width of a double-hulled canoe. Even from that distance, the shark demigod's gleaming alabaster teeth shone in the sunlight. Nom, nom, nom! Time to eat! His massive jaws collapsed into a canoe. Someone screamed! The shark dove back beneath the water. Lycos turned to the rudder, and the canoe veered to the left, away from the catastrophe. 
Masita gazed into the water, and then she yelped out loudly. He's under us! Lycos gazed at the ocean, but he only saw the waves. And then the gigantic fin arced out of the water, very close to the canoe. Rin watched in horror, locked in place. A shark face started to appear, rising at a swift pace. Brace yourselves! Lycos twisted hard and made the canoe veer to the right. Rin ran over to the mast and started to work the sail so it could be shifted to the right angle. A cold slither wiggled up Lycos's skin as the edge of Yangondo's mouth barely touched the edge of their back hole's tips. The shark's massive left eye locked on Lycos as the shark zipped forward. Gonna get ya. Gonna get ya. Gonna get ya. Ha 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 ha. Young Gondo kept going, gnashing teeth into an unlucky team of babies. There were more screams, the snapping of wood, and the ocean turned red. Oh no. Great Sudaiba, mother of the sea. No. Rin, don't look at it! We have to get away! Rin sniffled and she nodded. She secured the sail and she turned her head away from the carnage. Other voyagers were heading in the same direction as they were, and Lycos caught many an eye of the other sailors. Terror saturated them too, just like it did with Lycos. He had to get Rin and Mesita away though. He's following us! Sure enough, the massive fin cut through the waves, although most of young Gondo's form remained concealed. Scatter! Lycos veered the canoe to the right once more while others chose different directions. The fin kept moving toward them. From a distance, Lycos saw the expressions on the other voyagers' faces, and he couldn't blame them. What could they do against young Gondo, the great shark demigod? What could Lycos do? He's getting closer! The distance between the shark fin and the back edge of the canoe could be measured in feet, but at the last moment, the fin dove and arced to the left into the depths of the ocean. A sudden cloud of red filled the sea. Lycos sailed straight, but he kept looking back over his shoulder. At any moment, young Gondo could return. His body became quite stiff after a long time of being so tight and rigid, and he began to wane. Rin came over to him. Her eyes were red and her bottom jaw quivered a little. I'll watch the rudder for a while. It's been an hour. I think we're... safe. We're not safe yet. Young Gondu will pursue us if we try to veer back toward where we were going. We need to get farther away. Rin nodded as more tears dripped off of her chin. Lyko sat at the base of the mast and he let his eyes go unfocused. There was nothing he could have done against that, and nothing could have prepared him for it either. Out of nowhere, that monstrous force arose and devastated everything it touched. Could that have been what had scared their father from this path? It certainly put a fear inside Lycos. However, somehow, against all odds, they had gotten through it. No one said anything, though and they just sailed on into silence until the sun finally started to dip below the horizon. All those people, those voyagers, they, they... Masita went to her, and she hugged Rin tightly. Damn that shark! He took advantage of the voyage to gorge himself! He's the worst of Sudaiba's children! D do you think Alcuvo got away? You don't think they were one of the Siratasi who- I'm sure they got away. Thanks to Daiba that we did too. We almost didn't. It was because of you that we're alive. Yeah. You were amazing, big bro. Me? I was pathetic. Oh, no you weren't. You're not pathetic, nor have you ever been. I froze up. All my courage just evaporated away. It wasn't any help at all. Not to you two, and not to anyone else. 
Stop it, Rin! There's nothing anyone could have done against that monster. He is a force of nature. And so what if you froze up at first? Young Gondo was scary as hell. I was scared too. You snapped out of it and handled the sail, which allowed us to change directions easier and get away. You also helped with the sail, Masita. We all had a hand in surviving. Rin and Masita slowly nodded. Can you use the stars to help us plot a course to Fauna 2? I'm sorry. My mind is so frazzled. I don't think I can even think straight, much less figure out where we are or where to go. Maybe I can tomorrow? That makes sense. We all just survived through something unexpected and terrible. The important thing is that we made it out alive. We did survive, but will we be alright until we reach Fauna 2? Or even home? I think we'll be okay. So long as we don't lose hope, you know? That's what these turtle shell bands represent. Unwavering hope. Even in the face of terrible things. Well, we just got through a terrible thing. I still think we should sail for another day, to put us further from young Gondo. Hopefully he'll find other prey besides voyagers. We'll get through this. We have to. Not just for us anymore. But for those who can't finish. For those who can't finish. For all those who can't finish. Lycos! Masita! Look! Birds! Rin pointed in the distant sky to a flock of birds that soared from the northwest. Lycos emerged from the hut and gazed up, and to Masita, who had been sitting on the front of the canoe, peered up too. Is it just me, or is there something weird about those birds? You mean aside from the fact that they're purple? They're also bigger than the birds we have back home. Rin stared toward the north. They're headed in that direction. I didn't know there was another island near Fanatu and Isiba. I've never heard of an island to the north of the route between those islands. Well, they have to be going somewhere. Maybe it's Fanatu Island. No, I don't think it is. We haven't sailed far enough to get there. But that damn shark scattered us yesterday. We should follow them, if nothing else but to see. Are you sure that's wise? We could just keep sailing and then figure out where we are tonight. True, but then again, we could also restock our supplies too. I agree with Rin. We should check it out. We outvote you. Lycos chuckled softly. Whatever. I suppose an added bonus to the voyage is that we get to do some exploring. Thank you, big bro. And so they sailed on until sunset, upon which a single island came into view. The beach was empty, and even in the dying light, the trees looked strange. When they finally pulled their canoe onto the shore, Masita stopped, petrified at the sight of the plants, both trees and bushes. Those plants are different colors. Rin crept closer to one of the bushes, and she reached out to touch the blue-green leaves. Lyko snatched her wrist and held it firmly. What are you doing? Don't touch it! That's not natural. No, it isn't it. I think this might be... Twangoeti Island? Twango what? I've never heard of such a place. I have. Some of the other fishermen mentioned a cursed island called Twango Eddy Island. I, I thought they were trying to scare me or something. Masita took another step away from the edge of the jungle. Do you know why they say it's cursed? I don't, actually. I do. You do? Really? Why is it cursed? Masita brought her arms close to her chest, and she scanned the area around them before answering in a whisper. Once upon a time, the original Ayoela tribes left the first island. Most people believe there are only five tribes, but in the beginning, there were six. No way. Yes way. The sixth tribe of the Ayoela was lost on an island somewhere. It is confirmed by reliable sources that the sixth tribe did make it on an island. And then, they were lost. Reliable sources? What do you mean, lost? No one knows. 
but it was said the island that consumed them was a strange place of odd-colored flora and fauna. If no one knows, then how did the story get out? <laughs> how does any great story travel on the lips of others? Because Mojo Jala reveals to them the stories! Or something. I don't know. I just know I heard it from somewhere. Where did you hear it from? So if what you're saying is true, then there should be the remnants of ancient tribal habitation, right? Like ancient tools or buildings? I... don't... know. I know what you're thinking, and it's a terrible idea. Oh no... what? You're my best friend, so you should know what I'm going to do and say. Rin pulled her hand free and she began walking along the beach. Lycos watched her stroll away. Where is she going? Ugh, where do you think? Masita took off after Rin. Lycos shook his head and followed in their wake. Even with the moon in the sky, the shadows on the island seemed more ominous, more encroaching, and more unsettling. Lycos's nerves writhed in his skin as he hurried his pace to catch up with Masita and Rin. The island was silent, and yet a sort of hidden presence seemed to prod at him. They had been walking for about 20 minutes, and he hated every moment of it. Lycos managed to catch up to the pair of them. Listen, let's go back! If an entire tribe got lost on this island, what makes you think we're going to be all right? Why do you think I'm not going further in? I'm staying on the beach, where it's safe. Are we sure it's safe on the beach? What are we even looking for? I don't know. Maybe some old wood? Or the remains of a canoe? Lycos peered back into the blackness of the jungle, and he controlled his breathing to mask his apprehension. The repetition of the sea didn't help. I went with you on the voyage, and I supported everything you've done up till now. Can you please grant me this one thing and let us go back to the canoe? How about this? We walk for five more minutes, and then if we don't see anything interesting, we'll head back. Three minutes. Two minutes. Yes, two minutes. Fine, two minutes. 120 seconds passed like days in a week. Unfortunately, a speck of light danced in the distance. Whoa! Someone else is here! Maybe another team of voyagers found their way here. Um, no, I don't think so. That light is coming from a torch near a building. Sure enough, a small hut stood by the tree line of the island. Lycos crouched down lower, which made Rin and Masita do the same. Slowly, and against his better judgment, Lycos crept up to the building, keeping close to the ocean. The hut resembled the ones they had back on the Shanado Islands. And in the distance, Lycos saw more huts and small fishing vessels. I thought the whole tribe was lost. I thought they were. Or, or that's what I heard. I don't like this. Can we please go back to the canoe now? The door to the hut opened, and a figure emerged, holding up a torch. Lycos's stomach shriveled. The figure stood on two legs like a man, but its skin was dark gray. It had claws instead of fingers, and feet claws instead of toes. The monster wore a loincloth, but was bare-chested. It had the face of a person, but its eyes were completely black and it had a maul of sharp teeth. To Lycos's great relief, the monster walked further into its village, if it could be called that. Is that why the tribe got lost? Can we go back to the canoe now? The urge to nearly laugh overcame him, but he stifled it. Lycos started to turn around when he noticed a small figure standing on the edge of the tree line. The figure was probably a child, only coming up to where Lycos's solar plexus would be. 
They had long hair, the same dark eyes, and they wore a bright green dress. For a long moment, the little girl monster, Lycos, Mesida, and Rin, all gazed at one another, not sure what to do. And then the little girl ran toward the village. Run! We have to leave now! Masita and Rin sprinted down the beach, and Lycos just kept running after them. The sound of a high-pitched yell drilled into his ears, and he ran harder and faster. No one said anything, and they didn't stop despite how hard and fast they had run. Lycos's lungs groaned inside him, but he knew. Somehow he knew if he stopped, they would get him. Rin and Masita got to the canoe first, and they started pushing it back into the sea. They shifted the canoe around, and then the other two got on, while Lycos pushed it deeper into the water, away from the shore. Rin opened to the sail, and Masita was at the rudder. <gasps> Sweet Mauryu. Lycos almost paused, firstly for what Masita said, and secondly, because Rin also gaped and looked toward the beach. As soon as he pulled himself up on the canoe, he finally glanced as well. A dozen monstrous black-eyed figures stood on the beach with torches, spears, and some had bows and arrows. However, they didn't attack, come into the water after them, or even yell angrily. They just watched with grim and malevolent focus.